embodying values that's a great that's a great question Terry um, is there anything more important as a leader than how I show up yeah how I show up is how as how I, how I define myself that shows everything about what my priorities are to the people who I'm, I'm seeking to follow me yeah when I show up in a particular manner people will take their cues be it for better or for worse but how I show up is everything, yeah? Not what I say. But when you get into leadership roles in organisations, you have no choice. You know, you're there, and as I said before, you're leading people, and hopefully through trust and respect, and they're following you down a path that you're painting for them. You're creating a roadmap, and you're selling this roadmap for a reason. You've got a vision out there. And, and I suppose um, when you look at what, and it comes down to motivation. It comes down to what, what motivates people to follow you, you know. Um, sometimes it's just money, you know, it's, it's that extrinsic stuff. But for most people it's not. You know, they want something more than that. And I think there's a, in this day and age, I think particularly in, in, a, in uncertain times where we have to have really creative and innovative, innovative solutions for things that, that haven't been that haven't been modelled on things from the past, they're, they're, they're new and challenging things, or, or we've moved from a very stable environment to an unstable environment. Um, people, people have got to be motivated to do that, but th they've got to feel that, you know, it goes back to the Greek philosophers, you know, what, what, what do people really want? Well, they want freedom and they want some self-determination, they want to feel like they're doing something worthwhile and something good. And so the more that you can convince people that this future you're painting is ethical, and matches the values that the organisation has said that it stands for, chances are they'll want to be part of that. And if, you're, if your values don't match that, then you shouldn't be there. Uh, particularly as a leader, because you've got to go and sell those. You've got to, through your stories, you've got to sell them, but then they've got to see that you're doing that. Organisations fall into this trap, of course. They, um, they have marvellous social footprints outside their organisations, but inside it's like a prison camp. And um, that comes down to leadership and culture. And so leaders, and of course those people in there just won't believe stuff, you know, they'll, they'll see all the marvellous things that you're doing in the world, and they'll think, well, why, why aren't you doing it inside here? We're, we're miserable, you know, we're, and, and we think you're cheating. You know, we, we, we think you're, you know, you're making money unethically here and you're not doing the things that you, you, you say you do. You, you give money to people outside, but you don't look after us. So I, I, I really do think that both organisations and, and leaders need to, in all the spheres that they operate in, need to embrace the values that they claim they have. And there has to be as close as a one-to-one -one cor correlation as you possibly can be through very senior leaders in particular. We know that in order for a leader to be a good leader, they have to walk the talk. We've heard that term over and over again, which means that they must not only espouse certain virtues, but they must enact those virtues as they go about their process. Now, um, so this means that you treat people with respect, that you uh, show consideration about, you know, the environment, that, uh, uh, that you don't exploit people, you know, those sorts of things. And, and so those sort of behaviours must, of course, be enacted within the organisation. However, I suppose it would be possible for a person to live um, a, another life uh, in their home where they may be an abusive spouse, for example, um, and that could possibly happen and then they you know, take on a, a different persona in the workplace and they might, may well get away with it, but I, I really don't think that that sort of, um, that you can live that dual life without it becoming obvious at some stage. Where it does become relevant is where um, it is in the public eye that um, a person uh, does or says something publicly perhaps in their private capacity, but which, uh, uh, which is contradictory to the sort of values that they espouse um, um, in, the, in the workplace. I think it's critical. If you're not walking the talk, so you're talking the talk but people don't see you enacting it, then it's only one piece of the puzzle. And I think flexible work has been something that's suffered from that. It was seen as a woman's policy because male leaders were not taking 
the flexible work options. And now that there's been just a slight, tight, tiny change, people are talking about those men working flexibly, not coming into the office five days a week, not being first in, last out. And it's only been a handful of people affecting the change, but it's sent shockwaves because people can see it can be done differently and there's no penalties.